This video was sponsored by iHerb. <laughs>
as an engaged couple, we go out. We go out regularly. Him more than me, because I'm just not. <laughs> I'm like being at home, thank you. Even if he's not physically there, I love and really cherish the alone time that I get. I really do. And I feel like we have a really healthy balance of like personal time and time with friends. You don't do that, y'all would be wringing each other's necks. Like it would just get really old really quickly and it would definitely give codependent vibes. Make sure you you draw the line. Sometimes I'd be trying to get him out of here. I'd be like, it's Friday, don't you got somebody to go see? Like, don't you got friends? Damn! Not to be shady, but sometimes I really just like being by myself, like just by myself. And sometimes I have to sit down and explain to him, like, I'm not bad or anything. We're good. Cause he may be like, What's wrong with you? I'll be like, no, it's just my social battery is a little drained. I need some me time. I'm usually my best self when I've spent, even if it's just 30 minutes a day, by myself. Thinking, recentering, focus on what I want to do. Now in my relationships, I've noticed that it's actually really healthy for me when I spend time alone sometimes, even if it's just like 30 minutes out of the day, because I just feel like I can be my best self to other people so much better. By the way, the overarching theme of today's topic is literally putting yourself first in case you haven't picked up on that right now. Because just because you get engaged, it does not mean like, okay, it's us now, <laughs> bye guys. No, it's the exact opposite. It really is the exact opposite of that. And I know I kind of touched on this earlier, but just to kind of reiterate, you might actually lose some friends because let's be honest, as we get older, our interests change, the amount of time we can spend with people changes, our schedules change, our lifestyles change. And to be quite honest with you, and this is, not to come off in a judgmental way, but four or five years ago when a lot of my friends started having kids and I was nowhere near, not, not even close to being ready to do that. And I would get around them and it would just be like kids talking, baby feeding and breast milk and formula and what do you do for this and what do you do for that and gallbladders. And I would just be really switched off because I couldn't relate to that conversation and I could not relate to that stage in their lives. And it wasn't like, oh, you guys are weird, you're moms now. Like, no, not at all. But do, do the dynamics of friendships change as our common interests and our lifestyles change? Of course, like it would be literally a lie to say otherwise. It's okay to admit that. Like maybe we should admit that more often. Like, is that mean to say that? Like, okay, when I'm around like the new mom, sometimes like I'm really like, girl, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Your friends that are not engaged or even are thinking about wanting to be married or like family planning that are just not interested in that whatsoever. I think they kind of have the right to not be interested in that. So if y'all get together and you're talking about wedding planning and da, da 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 and stuff that they can't relate to, don't be surprised if they mentally check out. And I think you can still genuinely be like, wow, I'm so happy for you. I want that someday too, but I can't relate to that right now. So let me call someone else. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible. And I'm sure people probably say the same thing about me. I'm not the most party going person. And I've definitely become more of a homebody. Like once we got engaged, I still go out, but like not as much as my real party friends do. So yeah, all I'm trying to say is your friends, your time is gonna be limited once you take that next step. There are some couples that are like, I don't want nothing to change. I mean, I don't know how you would expect nothing to change, but there are a lot of couples who still like being the life of the party, still like going out regularly. But I would eventually think, you know, that would probably after a while probably get old for even the average party goer. Let's just be honest. So, you know, don't take it offensively if your BFF can't be as readily available. Um, don't call me at 3 a.m. <laughs> don't call me at 3 a.m. on an event about God knows what. Okay, you're blacked out. Don't call me, don't call me, unless you're in danger. A stranger danger unless you need help then i'm there sis i'm there but the key can and the wee hours the you know just telling your friends every inch and detail about your relationships your your manscapades like it's just gotta change it really does about to drink some of my coffee because this next one this next one might be a little controversial um, I just also wanna reiterate, these are my opinions and these are my personal experiences. So if you disagree, don't. I'm just speaking on what works for me and only me. Take these videos with a grain of salt, okay? And take from this video whatever you see fit. It really is up to you. Someone actually years ago made a whole video about how I'm not cut out for marriage and I don't even remember what the YouTuber's name was, but she made a whole video about how I'm not cut out for marriage because I had certain like modern or worldly wink wink views about commitment and marriage and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not acknowledging that today. I sort of kind of believe 
believe how you get them is how you keep them. That can mean a lot of different things. Normally people say that with like cheating, but I feel like let's say you meet a man and you like portraying a certain image. You like looking good. You like having the face beat. You always have your hair done, nails done. Once you get engaged and girl, once you get married, you kind of have to keep the same energy, but I feel like this is not as black and white as it may sound. I don't think this necessarily applies to everybody. I think people have so many different reasons why they over time start taking less care of themselves. Life happens, family things happen. People suffer from like miscarriages. They look like there's so many different ways you can get into a marriage and your lifestyle and your upkeep and your maintenance can completely change. So we're not talking about the anomalies. We're not talking about the exceptions. And I do believe that even when you still keep yourself up, you can still be disrespected in a relationship. You can still be cheated on. So don't take this video and make it something that it's not. And don't say that I'm saying something that I'm not. But if you do have, you know, a pretty strong built relationship like I do, it's, and I'm also definitely the type of person who likes to look good, likes to maintain a particular upkeep. I like looking good even around the house, but that's natural and that's authentic to me. I feel like a lot of people that's not authentic and natural to them. Maybe this is something that I think I still have like wavering thoughts on, like I'm not completely solid on this. Maybe it's not the smartest to put on if you know that once you get in a relationship with someone that you're not gonna maintain that. So for example, you know how some men, men love to do this. They act a certain way to kind of reel you in or they may say certain things to like entice you in the beginning very, very early on in the relationship. And then over time, the real them pops up and you're like, oh, this is what you was hiding underneath the snapback. Okay, it's good, good to know, thanks. So I feel like it's kind of the same way with us as women. I just wanna say right now, if there's any cisgender men watching this video right now, turn this off, turn this off. Okay, we're not gonna use this as ammo in any future videos. I feel like if you start dating someone and you know maybe I don't like to dress up, like you probably should not pretend to be something you're not in the beginning because if you can't maintain that energy, it might be a little bit of a shock later on, a little bit of a disappointment. Now with that being said, when we got engaged, I was very much so prim and proper, tip top shape, like always looking good, body right. That's because I genuinely enjoyed those things though. Speaking of wellness, this portion of today's video is gonna be done in partnership with iHerb. If you are not familiar with iHerb, don't worry, I recently wasn't either. It's a one-stop shop where you can buy supplements, nutritional products, groceries, pet supplies. I even found like feminine care on iHerb. It's pretty much a one-stop shop for all of that stuff. And I was first introduced to this website by way of Yuki, fellow YouTuber, fellow Nigerian, and she's also a registered nurse. She's an actual RN and she actually did a video recommending and talking about a bunch of supplements. As you guys know, some of us may not have the best diets and that's okay, I'm not here to diet shame. A lot of what we might be missing from what we eat, we supplement through supplements and that's why websites like iHerb exist, which is great. I was even able to find products that I cannot find anywhere else at some of the other places that I like to shop for stuff, which was great and these were like non-supplement things. So I'm like, okay, check, now I know where to go. Anyway, Yuki did this great top-notch video. I will be linking it in the description box below. I learned a lot from this video. I would highly recommend not only checking out her channel, but this video in particular, because it definitely taught me and educated me a lot on just different types of beauty related, health related supplements that I can add into my diet myself. I'm not really a supplement expert guys, but I know some of the basics. So I take her opinion very highly as a medical professional and I just genuinely like her personality and I like her advice and her tips. So I think if you guys want to get introduced to supplements, you should check out her video and you should also definitely check out iHerb. I'm going to have a coupon code code right here. iHerb ships to over 180 countries and the facilities are temperature controlled so you can assure everything is being stored properly, quality control on deck. I organically ordered this stuff before I was sponsored by the brand and then they reached out a week later. I don't know if that's God, manifestation, or both, but Shout out to you, thank you. So literally based on Yuki's recommendations, I literally brought almost close to everything she, that she recommended and then when they came along and said they wanted to work with me, I threw a couple more things in the bag. So I'm gonna introduce you guys to some of what I bought, but remember I'm not a medical professional and I'm just a YouTuber, a beauty YouTuber at that. The only thing I am licensed to do is hair, okay? So if you need a bleach and tell, you can call me. But I'm not the professional to be asking about, you know, please consult with your doctor. I'm just here to speak for myself and this is all opinion based. I can't give you medical advice, I just had to get that out the way. And also keep in mind, these are just claims, okay? The first thing that I tried are apple cider vinegar gummy. So the same benefits that you would get from taking apple cider vinegar daily, you know how disgusting 
that taste is, now you get it in the gummy. Apple cider vinegar for a lot of people is used for weight loss. It's, it can also regulate blood sugar. It can lower cholesterol. It can help promote weight management. So let's just say you're not trying to lose weight. You're just trying to maintain what you already have. A lot of people use apple cider vinegar to help contribute to that. But apple cider vinegar is disgusting. So you take two of these gummies a day. Oh my God, I just dropped the first one. I'm just touch like apples. These are kind of good actually. By the way, these are vegetarian. I don't touch any of the vinegar at all. I used to be that person that did the shot. By the way, in case you're wondering, I absolutely do not plan on taking all of these supplements like all at the same time every single day. Absolutely not. It'll be kind of more, you know, throughout life. This is something that I definitely want to add as soon as possible. Next, I added some raspberry gummies. These are raspberry flavored B12 vitamins. And if you're wondering what the hell B12 is supposed to do for me, B12 supports energy deficiency. So if you have anemia, if you find yourself being fatigued throughout the day, you could be allegedly, please don't take me to court. You could actually be B12 deficient. I did read that B12 deficiencies could trigger things like vitiligo, but people do say that it, you know, those are a couple of the things that being deficient in vitamin B12 could, you know, kind of increase over time. I will say I don't take a lot of supplements, but the ones that I do take are very meaningful and like they're there for a purpose. I don't just load up on a bunch of stuff just to say that I take them. Right now, I'm taking a hair, skin, and nail vitamin, but I really kind of want to like step it up because one, that's not the only concern that I have. And also, I don't always have the most nutrient rich diet. Collagen, thank you to you, Keith, for educating me on collagen and what it actually does when you take it as a supplement. This is supposed to support healthy hair, skin and nails, joints and bones. But you know, we always talk about hair, skin and nails as it relates to like taking biotin supplements, but apparently the collagen, this is a powder from collagen that you would mix in like a drink or water. This is supposed to do everything biotin thinks it's doing. With biotin, there was an attempt, apparently collagen does that 10 times more. So I'm really excited to actually add this to my diet because I'm in the beauty industry, so having great skin, having an overall beautiful presentation is a big part of what I do and what makes my job enjoyable and it also keeps me from getting dragged in the comments. Just so you know, this summer I'm only gonna get finer. Take notes now. And because it's powder form, I can imagine this probably will last a really, really long time. Thank you again to iHerb for sponsoring today's video. And I can actually speak to this as not only a brand ambassador and a customer, I was actually able to order like two day shipping, one day shipping on a lot of what you see here because sometimes when I run out of stuff, especially when I have like a regiment, if I run out of a vitamin and I don't have any backups and I don't realize it until like way later, being able to overnight stuff is quite convenient. So the fact that I was able to get everything literally in two days time was ultra convenient. The reviews are really helpful, like really helpful. And I actually found myself doing additional research just based off of the reviews alone because so many people have ordered these products. iHerb also has their own in-house brand of supplements. Actually, the Gummyology is their own in-house brand. And just so y'all know, just for the extra added peace of mind, all of the iHerb brands do follow the strict standards set by the FDA. And if for whatever reason you are not happy with the product, they do have a 90-day return policy, which is kind of nice. They also have a rewards program. I know the girls love rewards. You can earn points by reviewing products or by referring friends or family. And once you hit a certain threshold, you can cash out and use those points as cash dollars on future purchases. The first 5,000 people that use this code right here will receive 20% off their order. And the codes actually do work because I used you keys to order half the stuff that y'all are looking at in this video. If you guys have any questions on any of the supplements that I've talked about today, please bear in mind, I'm not the expert on these things. These are just things that I'm trying out myself that I'm somewhat fairly newly introduced to with some of these products, but I'll try to help when and where I can. And thank you again to Ayer for sponsoring today's video. And now back to the tea on being engaged. I know that this portion of the video can wildly be taken out of context. And these are the minted foundation sticks. I'm only gonna talk about the black owned stuff in, this, in the rest of this video, so stay mad. <laughs> the next tip I think is a good one. Even if you're not engaged, like even if you're in a relationship, keep some things to yourself. Don't have a linked phone, a linked Facebook, a linked Instagram, shared bank accounts, shared brain cells, like get an ounce of independence, I'm begging you. I don't tell all my friends every, all, like, I don't tell all my friends all my personal secrets. I don't tell my man all my personal secrets. He gonna know that when he sees the video. But not everybody needs to know everything about you and that's okay. Some things you're just gonna have to take it to the grave. Charge it to the game and take it to the grave. I especially am big on like bank accounts, like always have a little something tucked stashed somewhere. I've had my fair share of like traumatizing past experiences and relationships where I look back and I'm like, wow, 
the fact that I had literally nothing to my name, nothing to fall back on when things went terribly wrong. You live and you learn. But if I could change anything, I would definitely tell 21 year old Jackie, 22 year old Jackie, you ain't got my money, but the little bit you do got, put it in a separate account. Don't let nobody have access to it. Don't let nobody know about it. Don't even tell nobody. Even if it's like a secret phone number, you know, a little Kim Possible phone, just have something to yourself. And don't tell everybody your business. I'm gonna do some setting spray. <laughs> Things you probably shouldn't spray on your face. <laughs> Basically, don't put all your eggs in one basket. The one person that I really learned this from is actually my mom. So she got divorced into her, I think, late 40s, early 50s. I'm only talking about this because I know she's spoken about this. It definitely taught her to like have somewhat of a strategic, smart backup plan and to also not rely too, 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 too heavily on somebody. When you least expect it, expect it. I'm just saying, girl, like you just never know. Speaking of parents, one thing I've also gotten really good at, and you know what? I'm actually really grateful that my mom put me onto this and helped me set a lot of healthy boundaries between like me, her, and her relationship with my now fiance. Don't tell your parents all your business. Like, stop. Your parents are gonna very much so do what friends do in those situations. They gonna take your side. They gonna take your side. And it's gonna be very, very hard for them to separate what they did versus who they are in that moment. And you know, you go through the moving on and the forgiving. Like, let's just say this person did something really stupid. Like they said something stupid out of the heat of the moment. Your partner I'm talking about, they said something really crazy. And you had to gather, yaga. Go run and tell your mama. Your mama ain't gonna forget that. What makes you think she gonna forget that? She loves you. She's gonna make sure mm -hmm, we see each other. Now the red flag stuff, abuse, absolutely. Please, when you spot it, get loved ones involved. But I'm talking about like the little stupid stuff that y'all be arguing about on the day to day. It's especially the every day to day stuff. Stop telling your parents, stop. You grow on what you need to tell them for. I've definitely become self-reliant and I've gotten better at relying on things like therapy and also venting to like other engaged married couples. Like I'm not gonna go to somebody and this is no disrespect, but I'm not gonna seek advice from somebody who's like not in the position that I, I want to actively work towards. So like, it's just not, I think, the best strategy to talk to your single friends about your relationship woes because they're a lot of times gonna think in a single mindset and that's just literally my opinion. I'm not saying that's what y'all gotta do. I would prefer to go to other engaged couples, actually really married couples because married people have already, like the goal is marriage. The goal is healthy, happy marriage. So aim high, but don't, don't tell your single friends and definitely don't vent to your parents about everyday mundane, especially the little spats, handle that stuff yourself. Nah, real G's move in silence like Bemi. So I don't really have nothing special about this look and that's why I'm not even like really showing y'all what I'm using because it's pretty much like the everyday Jackie face. I'm gonna now use some of my Mocha Mommy. I don't think I'm summer enough for this one yet. Try it again. Just kidding, I'm gonna use Coco Nori because Coco Nori is a little bit more neutral less red. My last video was a five minute makeup routine. This video is 15 minutes. Don't y'all understand how editing works and talking, teaching? Like, you know it's not gonna take me five minutes to teach, right? Just checking, is everything okay out there? Just checking. But like, yeah, on a good day, this is actually like my cute little 20 minute beat. And don't worry, I'm gonna do my brows. Don't worry, I didn't forget. One thing about me, you don't just come here for makeup and I'm not bringing y'all just looks. Yeah, the looks are everything too, but I like talking with y'all and, and you know, bringing up popular culture and things that y'all can actually learn from. Cause I've come to realize over the years, like people don't just watch me for makeup. So I try to keep the topics a little bit more relevant, stuff that you guys can relate to and stuff that you guys possibly could even learn from. Now, I just wanna reiterate again, all of the opinions in this video are really just, and I hate that I have to say this like 50 times, but I do find that sometimes people can hear something in earshot and then be forgetful. You know how the game of telephone works with social media. They may hear a splice and then all of a sudden it becomes something completely different. People tend to do that with my content a lot. And if you do stuff that I don't say that people be dragging for, that makes me even more confused. Cause I'm like, I never even said anything remotely close to that. What you doing? And also I've come to realize that people that don't like me even tend to really gravitate towards my content. I'm not sure why, but you know, 
um, those will be the people that will always be hell-bent on twisting the stuff that I say. And you know what, to be honest with you, that's not really my problem. This is more so for the, those of you guys that watch me and maybe you might need clarity on stuff that I'm talking about in this video or if a topic may seem confusing or like, what did you mean by that? Feel free to just ask away in the comments and tell me if any of these tips or any of this advice is helpful to any of you guys. And y'all can tell me like, what tips do you guys swear by since being engaged, married, motherhood, fatherhood, whatever hood you from, rep your set. Tell me if you're engaged or married, what have you learned? Like what is something that has reigned true throughout from singlehood throughout being engaged? And by the way, I also kind of want to reiterate the journey of like aging and moving through different stages of your life. It's not linear. So what is true and what may apply to me right now may not really apply to me in five years. You never know, like things change, people's life courses change and opinions change and our experiences changes in a lot of ways. I just want to reiterate that. And since we mentioned keeping your friends off your business, this is probably going to be kind of controversial because of what I do. I'm a content creator. I'm on social media. I don't know if y'all have noticed this. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but I don't really like putting my relationship too, too much online. I don't run a Twitter to subtweet when I'm feeling away or when we have a disagreement or when we have an argument or when something is just like, I don't know, maybe we need to get on my nerves. I don't be running to the internet, be doing all that. And we also definitely, definitely don't capitalize off of our relationship. I just don't see myself ever doing that. I'm not saying it doesn't work for other people because I actually think it does. I think some people do really great at navigating social media and being in the public eye and dating each other publicly. To a certain extent, we do kind of do that. But you know, like when we had our vlog channel, which Dennis was like, I'm over it, I'm over doing vlogs. <laughs> Corona kind of killed our vlog channel too, but my brand is not centered around our relationship. Even our vlog channel wasn't centered around our relationship. It was around travels. It was around like, you know, kind of like surface level things that we would do out and about, take you guys with us. It was more aspirational if anything. I just feel like putting too much of your stuff online, people will make themselves your self-appointed accountability partners. Who asked you? Who asked? It's too much. Go do that stuff offline, please, because then you won't give people an inch of ammo. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up this video when I pop on my lashes and some blouse and I gotta go. The last tip I wanna share y'all, I swear whenever other married people or other people in really committed relationships would say this to me, I'd be like, you're lying. Shut up, shut up, you're lying. I can't believe I'm gonna say it on camera. I can't believe I'm gonna say this on camera. Oh my God. This never happened. If anybody brings this up, this segment of the video never happened. Girl, should I say it? All right, fine. Not every battle is worth, not every, ow! Not everybody, not everybody else is worth fighting. You don't have to win every argument. Bro, like don't play with me, I never said that. I never said that. I, I feel like a lot of us don't really have a thing for argument. I feel like a lot of us, especially, especially when someone is just being really annoying and you just want them to just stop talking, just have a thing with wanting to be right, especially in our relationships. So that's partially some of what my motivation is with like really driving home an argument. It's like, I just know you're wrong. And the sooner you admit you're wrong, we won't have no issues moving forward. The problem with that logic, <laughs> there's a lot, but the desire to really just cuddle honestly outweighs the desire to just really have the upper hand in arguments a lot of times. There's times where like my fiance just, I'm like, did you really have to do that? You, you didn't say that, did you? Yeah, I thought, I didn't think you did. It could just be as simple as like a, <laughs> okay, and walk away, but literally walk away. Like don't antagonize the person. And I'm dating a Pisces, so if you're a Pisces, y'all can take notes on this one. Maybe be a little passive aggressive. If it means walking away from the situation, not saying anything super rude or disrespectful, just walk away. You can get your licks in otherwise, but a lot of times it really don't even worth it because like let's just say you are right and he left the trash can open or didn't take it out for a couple days okay cool and then what you won that battle and then what at what cost seriously that skill i definitely thought was for like people in their 60s like oh when you turn 60 70 you just stop arguing with people huh because you just be on chill mode 24 7. but no that really does come from a lot of like look eventually if we argue our way out of everything we're not going to enjoy each other and two it's not even fun anymore the way that i want to get to know and bond with my partner don't involve being right or don't involve like having the last word or getting your little sidebar passive aggressive remarks in you feel me like i just don't enjoy those things as much anymore i used to but that 
that's because I was dating really crappy people, horrible people in fact. When you're with the right person, I think that is kind of what makes it easier is when you know like, okay, this is genuinely like the person that I'm just meant to be with and we gonna figure this out. So if it means I'm just gonna have to for a second, it's something, but it's nothing. You got it, he knows he wrong, let him know he wrong. Also a really good partner is not gonna let you argue all day. You wanna argue? The worst thing is when you're dating somebody and you're dating somebody who does not know how to resolve conflict. They only know how to amplify it and that is the worst. Cause I've, like I said, I've, I've been there. But when you're with someone who's the exact opposite of that and they wanna actively work on just the health of the relationship overall, like you don't really, your brain just doesn't go there. You don't think about the fighting. Yeah, I won this one. You're, you're not keeping score is what I'm trying to say. Like you're just not thinking that way because y'all love each other and you just wanna do that in, in peace. I'm gonna finish up my look <laughs> with the Fenty Cream Gloss. This is in the shade Honey Waffles. Guys, just, I'm gonna wrap it up here. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. And this video is meant to be more conversational, just like, you know, chilling with your bros. Like, what would I say from one friend to the next if someone asked me, hey, like, what have you learned since being engaged? Cause I do feel like as life goes on, you're gonna keep growing, you're gonna keep learning and um, never stop learning because that is what will make you stagnant if you do. Friendly reminder, YouTuber advice is not a replacement for therapy, okay? I'm not a therapist. I'm just here to chat with y'all about my own opinions. And YouTubers should not be seen as therapists, unless you're, of course, literally a therapist who happens to have a YouTube channel. So take these videos with a grain of salt and take from this video whatever you may find beneficial or not. If you made it to the end, congrats. I'm gonna be giving away, ah, a big check, honey, for 500 cold hard. American dollars. Because what better way to take care of you and put you first than by doing it with some money? Uh -huh. Now, just comment on one of the topics on the video, comment on what you felt you related to. That's all you have to do. And then leave your cash tag, not Venmo, not PayPal, just cash tag, just cash tag for right now. Leave a comment and leave your cash tag at the end of your comment. It can be about anything in the video. It could be about me, my hair, the topics. It could be about anything. Just don't leave just your cash app or your comment will be deleted. I love how y'all do that anyway. And your comments end up deleted. So don't do that. Leave a comment and I'll pick one lucky winner to give away $500 for watching and commenting on this video. And that's pretty much it. Thank you again to iHeart for sponsoring today's video. If you guys wanna watch another one, I'm terrible at linking these, but let's just, let's, let's just for old time's sake pretend like I did link it. I'm gonna put it right here. Let's be real, I'm probably not gonna do it, but figuratively, spe hypothetically speaking, if there were to be a next link video, it'd be right here. Y'all gonna bully me in the comments about this, aren't you? 